because we've done math, I promise you it's going to be a thing of beauty. Hello, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Hardcore with Tabernuch Interplanetary. We're in the middle of building our relay communication network in low carbon orbit, so we can have a connection back to Kerbin from anywhere in the sphere of influence with our probes. We launched one relay satellite and circularized at two and a half million meters. We launched a second one and just sort of eyeballed it somewhere further along that same orbit and circularized it as well. So now we've got two, as you can see here, at pretty much perfect 90 degrees to each other. We've got to put up two more at the west and south as um, from our current perspective to have a perfect network. And we're going to treat this video as tutorial on how to hit that's that point on an orbit, circularize and have this stable, properly spaced constellation of relay satellites. Now I say tutorial, but we're still playing no reverts, no quick saves. So we're going to narrate this as though it's tutorial and just go with a abundance of unfounded optimism that we're going to get it on the first try. So, here you see Vyarja uh, our two-stage relay satellite launch system. Here's our satellite. Consists of a bunch of antennas, battery, some solar panels, a uh, inline stabilizer, some fuel, and a very small engine. And then our launch stage, powered by three thuds. Now going for a perfectly circular low carbon orbit, it's a pretty standard launch profile. We're going to put our throttle to full. We're going to turn on our stabilizer. We're going to launch straight up at full throttle. And then at about 5,000 meters, we're going to start pitching over to the east to start that gravity turn. We're going to slowly scale back on the throttle a little bit as we're launching to keep our throttle thrust to weight ratio, which you see currently is 1.89, from going too far above 2 to avoid too much air losses. And once we get to the mid to upper atmosphere, we're going to go full thrust to avoid the gravity losses. Here we go. Straight as an arrow. Beautiful. See the thrust to weight ratios coming up above 2 already. We're not going too fast yet, so we're not going to worry about it that much. And I'm going to start feathering the thrust down. I'm going to switch us to prograde hold. And I'm going to pitch us over. see the prograde hold keeps pulling me back as I'm making these small adjustments. It's fine. It can be a little, it can feel smoother to keep it on regular SAS hold while you're doing this. But it, I like the prograde hold because it stops me from accidentally overcorrecting. Now I'm going to get us back into our proper, like, our easy to identify roll. I'm going to switch us to orbital frame of reference now, which is going to pitch us over further. I'm going to go back, take us back to full throttle. We're mostly out of the atmosphere. And we're going to cut it when our apoapsis gets up around 100. This is arguable here, actually. One thing we can do is we can float up to 100, we can circularize at 100 to make sure that as we do the rest of our orbital um, adjustments, we're never going to fall below the uh, edge of the atmosphere. However, we do have the option, which I think I'm going to do here because it's more fuel efficient, of at this point just burning straight up to our, uh, to our, desti to our destination, to our desired orbit. So we're going to put throttle back on full. Keep burning prograde directly east. 
Okay, we're going to release our fairing now because our first stage is out of fuel. We're in space, so we don't have to worry about the aerodynamic losses. Oh, sorry, we don't have to worry about the aerodynamic damage to our delicate solar panels and antennae. So let's blow the fairing. Let's extend our antenna. We're going to separate our first stage, which is going to just carry on its parabola, ballistic trajectory, burn up on re-entry. We're going to go back to full throttle immediately. And we're just going to keep burning until our apoapsis is at pretty much two and a half million meters, our desired orbit. So we're going to see this blue line or trajectory here. Keep climbing and climbing until it comes up to the vicinity of these two satellites we have here. As you can see, as our apoapsis gets higher, we're still not on a proper orbit yet. The, uh, our trajectory brings us back, crashing into Kerbin. With the amount of fuel we've spent now, we could easily have circularized by cruising up to our apoapsis and then burning right at the peak, which would push out the other end of our orbit, rather than this ballooning outwards we have here. For instance, we're primarily interested in gaining altitude right now. We're not going to worry about it. It looks like we might actually have a... Uh, proper orbit by the time we cut our power here anyways. Okay, we're going to stop there so we don't overshoot. Yeah, so our orbit is still not properly above the atmosphere on the other side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to very lightly feather our orbit upwards until we're pretty much right at our two and a half million destination. See our apoapsis height in the top left that I'm watching very carefully. 60, 70, 80, 90, and stop. That is close enough. The very small, we're going to make really fine adjustments at the top, but for now, with more orbit shaping to do, those five kilometer difference is not going to screw up our plans at all. And you'll notice one thing is that this orbs at an inclination. Um, you can see that our two existing satellites, they're perfectly circular to each other from above, but they're at a slight tilt to each other. For this uh, satellite, relay satellite network, we're not worried about that at all because their orbital period's exactly the same. So even though at one point, one might be a little bit higher, one might be a little bit lower, as they orbit, they're gonna be keeping that same distance from each other in terms of actual, like, the angle. Now this looks like we're going to intersect the orbit uh, currently. If the other two satellites didn't move, then we'd be intersecting the orbit exactly opposite of one of our satellites, which is perfect. But, as we speed up time a little bit here, coming to our apoapsis, you're going to see, of course, that these two satellites continue to progress forwards. So we're going to be somewhat out of sync with them once we get there. Now we don't want to overshoot, overshoot our apoapsis here. We're going to want to continue to burn prograde right at our apoapsis, which is just the standard circularization. We've got an orbit, it's not circular at apoapsis. If we burn prograde until the periapsis comes up to the same as the apoapsis, that's when you have a perfectly circular orbit. Okay, let's slow down here and talk a little bit what we're going to want to do. So, we're actually pretty close. We've got, if you look at us, we're at the south, and at the north, we've got one of these satellites just a little bit east of 12 o'clock. Now, for us to be in our perfect position, we want the satellite that's to the north currently to be at exactly 12 o'clock when we're at exactly 6 o'clock. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly switch over to the satellite and take a look at its orbital period and do some calculations. Okay, so here we are controlling our satellite at 12 o'clock. And we can see our other satellite down there. Now let's look at our orbital period because that's the vital number for getting these line, things lined up properly. We have an orbital period of 5 hours, 4 minutes, 9 seconds. Let's get that in seconds. 
which is what's actually going to be useful to us. So that in seconds is 304 minutes times 60 plus 9.15. 18,249.15 seconds is how long it takes our existing satellites to get from their current point in their orbit all the way around Kerbin back to that point in their orbit again. When we're making the intermediate orbit for our new satellite, if we want the existing satellite to get a little bit further ahead so it's directly opposite ours, we need our transit orbit, orbit to be longer than that by the difference that we want the top satellite to have progressed. And we're going to figure that we want to go ahead by about 10, uh, 10 degrees, which is close enough to 3% of this. So we need this satellite to have progressed ahead by 547 seconds. We need our transit orbit to be 547 seconds longer than our previous number. So we're going to add the number from our memory. 18,796 is the number of seconds that our transit orbit needs to be. So let's divide that by 60. 313 minutes, 0.277. So let's take that 0.277 times 60, 16.62 seconds, 313 minutes, 16.62 seconds is our transit orbit. Let's go back and fly Vierge 1. Vierge 1.3. We need to rename these. Uh, relay satellites pretty soon. So we are pretty much at our apoapsis right now. Perfect. We're going to burn prograde and we're going to burn until our orbital period comes up to five hours, 13 minutes, 16.62 seconds. Let's burn. Okay, we overshot. Good thing we have lots of fuel. We'll do our gentle adjustment on the way back down. Sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. Five hours, thirteen minutes, forty-seven seconds. So we're gonna now we're going to do a little trick. Where we're going to limit the thrust on our engine so that when you use the throttle, we get much more delicate control. This is essential to get these very close to within a second or a fraction of a second um, adjustments. 13 minutes and 16.6 uh, .6 seconds is our target. Counting down, you see the orbital period here in the flight engineer. Close enough. 5 hours, 13 minutes, 16.83 seconds, with our des our target was 16.62, we're calling that a total win. Let's look at our map now. Now we're not worried at all right now about the fact that our orbit is not actually lined up with the other orbits, because we're only worrying about the orbital period. When we come back here, when we're back to this point after this orbit, we should be directly opposite the satellite on the top. We're going to want to correct our orbit at the point where it, cro where it crosses the existing orbit, because when we're adjusting an orbit, when we tilt it back to the right, any adjustments you make to the orbit, it's important to know you're always, of course, going to have a new orbit which has the point you're at on it. So if we want our new orbit to be equivalent to this white orbit, we have to make our adjustment burn at the point where our current orbit, the blue one, is crossing the white one, which is where we're at now. Let's see. Let's zoom out and see. Is it straight up? Boom. Dead across from us. 
Now to adjust this orbit so that it is in sync with the other ones, we're going to have to, we're heading towards our periop periapsis now, which means we need to burn up from Kerbin in our radial out direction. And as we burn here, you're going to see our blue orbit tilt over without changing the orbital period at all to match the white one. When it's perfectly lined up, it's going to stick out a little bit further on the apoapsis because of the fact that we made our transitory orbit longer. Now what's our current altitude? 2488.3. Now we're going to burn directly retrograde to bring our ap apoapsis down to exactly two and a half million kilometers. 2,510,000. Let's burn off that last little bit. At this thrust level, we can see it coming down 10 meters at a time, or 100 meters at a time. Exactly 2.5 million apoapsis. And when we're right at the apoapsis, we're just going to burn prograde until our periapsis comes up to 2,500 kilometers as well. Tiniest of adjustments here. 2500 by 2500. Now, if you look, our orbital period, five hours, four minutes, 8.94 seconds. You might recall that the other satellite has an orbital period of five hours, four minutes, 9.1 seconds, and we are perfectly lined up. One, two, three, one more off at the east. And we've got a beautiful relay network that will remain stable for, we can calculate the drift um, by looking at how many orbits it's going to take for that difference of 0.2 seconds to actually affect the position relative position around the orbit. It's going to be literal years. So all we've got to do is do it again. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, we've hit our destination altitude, more or less. That's the actual surface. We're going to actually do our burn when we're at uh, altitude 2500 exactly, as close as we can. And we've got these three satellites here. We need them to do a pretty large shift around because we want our satellite, which is currently at the south, to be in that spot at the northeast. So we're going to try and subtract from the orbit this time, see if we can without intercepting the intercepting Kerbin. We want... Okay, so we want to rewind that orbit by 150 degrees. 150 degrees is 41 point seven percent of a circle which means we want our orbit to be uh, 58.7 so 58.3 of the orbit of our existing satellites we want an orbit of 10,000 639.2 seconds, which is in minutes, 177 minutes, 0 0.31, so that's two hours, 57 minutes, 
and 0.32 times 60, 19 seconds. Our current orbital period, 2 hours 22, 33, which is perfect. Perfect because it means we can increase our orbit period slightly by burning prograde when we're at our desired altitude, which we're not quite yet. We're going to push our orbit a little bit bigger, which would also be just enough to push our periapsis out of Kerbin's atmosphere. And then after just one cycle, when we come back to the spot, because we've done math, all four of our satellites are going to be perfectly aligned with one another. Now let's watch this. I promise you it's going to be a thing of beauty. We have four satellites. They're all messed up. We're going to do one circuit around Kerbin. And when we get back, bingo. And all that's left to do is circularize. period, 5 hours, 4 minutes, 9 seconds. Periapsis, 2.5 million kilometers. Apoapsis, 2.5 million kilometers. Spread around the orbit, couldn't really be better. And that, my friends, is how you build a properly aligned telecommunications network with four satellites on the same orbit. I couldn't be happier. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.